Hey everybody, Flying Fox Fruits here. Today this video is recorded just by me. Don't have a filmer, but I'm gonna make it a good one. I'm gonna try so hard. I'm gonna try to get the audio right. I'm gonna try to get the images right. I'm gonna try to get the message across as clear and as concise as I can and try to be fluid and lucid when I speak and use real small words so that everyone doesn't, so that everyone understands. Today's video is about Sabra as a rootstock. Think about that. What's Sabra and what's a rootstock and why am I talking about it? Well, I grow Jabuticabas, which I call Planeas. Some are Mircearia kinda, gets a little confusing. But um, let me try to explain this. The Planeas are gonna be compatible with Planea, typically. <laughs> and stuff that they're calling Mircearia nowadays probably is not going to graft onto Sabara. Okay, I'm going to walk you over to my Sabara tree over here. I got a bunch of Sabara trees, but none of any real size. I figured everyone was growing them already. I didn't need to grow it. I could get rootstocks. I could get little trees, big trees. They're already widely available. But this is what I ended my last video with about the um, red Jaboticaba, comparing it to the Sabara. So this is Plinia Jaboticaba variety Sabara most common in the world, most widely planted in the world, but it works really well as a rootstock, okay? And um, this one's starting to flower, like I said in the last video. It hasn't fruited yet, and it's about 12 years old. Half of the reason is, is I probably haven't taken really good care of it. It's got too hot, hasn't got fertilized, hasn't got water. But now let's look around here. Let me try to find you a reason why I like it so much. First, I guess I should show you the bad news first, which would be this. Well, trying to show you what they look like when, well, we'll show you the good news first. This tree is grafted on Sabra rootstock. The scion is Plinia truncaflora. And um, it looks pretty good to me. There's not a lot of leaf burn. It's out here in like a full sun setting pretty much. It does get shade in, in the morning from this oak tree. But look how pretty the leaves look. And there's really not a lot of like tip burn to speak of. You don't see like burnt leaf tips. Lots of new growth. Not a bunch of burnt leaf tips. I'm not seeing it really anywhere. It's actually amazing. And I'm telling you right now, the only reason this tree doesn't have burnt leaf tips all over and doesn't look like tr trash is because it's grafted on Sabra. Now the, 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 the rootstock is down really, really low. You can barely see it. I think there it is right there. You can see where the peel changes and the color turns green. That's the rootstock. It's under the ground by now. When you graft a fruit tree, well, not, well, I don't know. Yeah, fruit trees in general, especially the Jabuticabas I've seen, if you graft them up here, the, the graft migrates downward. And that's because the tree's expanding as it grows. And you would think it goes up, but it actually forces the graft union down under, uh, you know, to the, to the soil over time. It's kind of interesting how that works. It's a little counterintuitive. So I like the Sabra rootstock because it can take a flood. It can take a little bit of a drought. Um, not a hardcore drought, to be honest about that. But it, it takes a wide range of uh, pH. Well, I'd say wider than some of the rare varieties. Like, um, I don't know, some of these Fetranthas I've noticed. Or anything with like a nice large leaf wants to burn up. As soon as you put it in alkaline, okay, the trunk of floras look like trash in alkaline or even in, 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 not even to alkaline. Let me go take you over to my big seedling trunk of flora trees and show you what they look like when they're not grafted. Oh, and let me show you a Paulista that's grafted versus some that are not. This is a Paulista. That's Plinia cauliflora. Everybody likes to call Plinia, uh, Mircearia cauliflora is what they call Sabara. But this is the real Plinia cauliflora, one of the many varieties of it. Probably one of the more popular. Paulista makes a really big fruit. <sighs> Not a lot of leaf burn on this tree as far as tip burn. There is some heat burn. This is burn from heat. This is just sheer sunburn and heat. This leaf right now is like 100 degrees. It's hot. So that is sunburn, but not tip burn. I don't see a lot of tip burn going on. And that once again is because this is a grafted tree. I don't think it's flowered yet. I'm sure it's not flowered yet, but it should flower someday. These are notorious for taking 
I think I'm speaking too loud into the camera. These are notorious for taking a long time to flower. The Paulistas. Let me go find you one. I'm going to go find you a seedling Paulista that looks like junk. Here we come around the corner here. It's a nice little trunk of flora hybrid. Uh, we're calling that Novax trunk of flora hybrid. And it looks decent, but I do see some uh, tip burn on this. This is a grafted tree. So... It looks good though. It doesn't look too bad. I don't see a lot of tip burn. Now here you go. Here's a seedling trunk of flora and look at all that tip burn. Now this is one of the, the prettier ones I have that looks pretty good, matter of fact. But every leaf tip seems to get that burn. Every single one. And it's planted in the shade. I know it's not heat related entirely. It's got some nice new growth coming out. I fertilize it. I take care of it. It just had a major bark peel, which is a great sign. That means it's doing well that big old bark peel all these lichens that have been covering it for years are now getting shed away look at these lichens that thought they had something to hold on to sorry bubba you going away you're gonna fall off all this nasty lichens coming away so this tree's actually doing pretty well but they grow really slow and they suffer from issues here with a ph get all that stuff coming off that tree you got a little lizard there it says you're ruining my home bro Look at that. That's like when you get a sunburn at the at the beach, isn't it? But look at all that nasty um all the nasty lichens coming off. You can sell that for a terrarium, man. I want to line my terrarium with that, man. Anyway, I'd like this thing to flower. It sure teases you like it is. It's got bumps all over. It says, "Oh, I'm going to flower." Oh, yeah, one day. Yeah, right. Ain't going to flower. But look at the leaves. Burnt. But now I'm going to show you another seedling. Oh, look, this is Paulista again. Seedling Paulista. Look at the leaf bird on that sucker there. Maybe it's because I let it dry out one day. I think that's part of it. Too hot and too dry. But if that was on Sabara, it wouldn't look so bad. I'm telling you, man. Paulista has problems. Coronada has problems. Trunk of Flora has problems at my house. Now, this ain't going to be at your house. But if your pH isn't just right, look at that Trunk of Flora seedling. That's what I'm used to seeing. Down south... If you see a Jabba de Caba in South Florida that always has burnt leaf tips while all the other ones look good, and the owner of it's like, I don't know why I can't get this thing to stop getting these burnt leaf tips. You tell me how. It's probably a, it's probably a, a Plinia truncaflora. They're out there. This one came from South Florida. But no, the other one that you saw came from South Florida. This one came from Toppy. But look how bad the leaves look. From lack of rain, poor pH, heat. Look at that. Unreal. And it goes through that every time. And if it was grafted, it would be that much prettier. I know it. I've seen it happen. I'm going to walk back and show. Uh, well, here's a here's a Sabara growing right near it. And look at this Sabara. The leaves look pretty good on that. So think of Sabara, this tree right here, the most commonly planted in the world, as a filter. When you put it on, it acts like a filter and helps them grow better. Some of the rare varieties that have issues with water quality and pH. You put that Sabra rootstock underneath it, you got you a filter. And it filters out unwanted impurities and things like that. Scientifically proven. Anyway, let me take you on a tangent here while I walk back to show you a couple more grafted trees. This is some kind of a Nona. I got it as Cornifolia, but I don't think it is Cornifolia. Maybe it is. It makes a fruit that looks like Cornifolia, but I heard there's a look-alike species. Anyway, beautiful little flower. The fruit on that is garbage, though. The fruit on that is garbage, though. And I'm not lying. It tastes like nothing. All right, we're going to walk you back over to another trunk of flora that's grafted and show you another seedling, Paulista, if I can, that looks okay. Because, you know, there are exceptions to the rule. Where sometimes you graft them and they still look a little junky. I got one grafted over here that looks a little bit junky. But not horrible. And I think this is heat related more so than anything. But it's not in any hotter a position than my other one. Okay, this is a grafted tree once again. And it is showing burnt leaf tips, but not horribly so. So I'd say the rootstock, the Sabra rootstock definitely helped this one out. But it's got the burnt leaf tips. Not horrible though. There you go. That's got to be heat related. But I think that would be unbearably ugly if it wasn't if it wasn't grafted buddy it would be unbearably ugly unbearably so a lot of these just need fertilizer things like that let's see if we can show you one more 
So Sabara, as you can see, is an easy tree to grow, widely available. You can use it as a rootstock for many of these trees. The, plane the planeas, that is. If it looks like Sabara, the fruit, you could probably graft it onto Sabara. If it starts to look too much different, you start to wonder. Okay, here's a... This is a Paulista that looked really bad for a while, and now it's trying to green up. This is a seedling. So, I'm thinking it's partially heat-related. But, ooh. Depending on the seedling, too. But they seem to do so much better when they are grafted. This one's surprising me by how good it looks. You should have seen how bad this thing looked a while ago. I fertilized it. I pulled some weeds. But, yeah, it's trying to come out of its funk here. Anyway, this is a Paulista that's defying logic here by looking kind of good, being planted on its own its own roots here. I think it has to do with location now. But yes, a general rule of thumb, when you go grafting onto Sabara, it makes all the difference. Even with the anomaly, the seedling anomaly grows at like one third of the rate as a grafted. So you're gonna get more vigorous growth. And there's other rootstocks that you might wanna experiment with one day. Maybe Grimmel, but who wants to go grafting over a Grimmel? Or maybe a white, but who wants to go grafting over a white? Anyway, I hope this taught you something. I didn't mean to confuse you too bad. But Plinia jabaticaba, which everyone still probably sells as Myrciaria cauliflora. The variety I'm talking about is Sabara. There's other varieties of Plinia jabaticaba. Cascuda, I believe. Um, there's all these other ones. It gets confusing. But think of the Sabara as a filter typically great all right you guys have a great day get out there and graft grafting season's coming up in florida as soon as we get some cool down after these hurricanes get out of here i'm thinking october is when we might get cracking all right guys take care